virtual village family how are you all doing on this wednesday evening i hope that you all are doing well and that everybody has their wits ends to them this is um the day after election day we are aware of that and we were here last night for everybody as a repeat a reprieve as some of you were going through uh you know wrecking your brains going through a little bit of insanity or just biting your nails or whatever you know we're all Always here for comfort. We are that safe space um, and we are here promoting literacy, culture, community and love. And, you know, last night was community connection and we had a wonderful guest up here talking about things that are relevant to um, African-American children and education. And you know that tonight it is time for our foundational literacy lesson. But before we get into all of that, Y'all know we have some other exciting things that we have to discuss first. And I, I have something exciting that I want to share with you guys. So hold tight. Uh oh, we have our pumpkin here, Shania. She is saying good evening. Good evening, precious. So glad that you are here. We're always looking for that greeting. Virtual villagers, if you are tuned in right now, let us know that you are here. Let us know that you are present and how you are doing. We love hearing from you. And as I was saying, you know, it's all about literacy, culture, community, and love. And we had a wonderful event today that encompassed all of those things. We actually had one of our book deliveries today. And if you have been following Clever Communities in Action for a while now, then you are aware of what that means and how exciting those things go. And we're super excited that we were able to do that, to provide that, even during COVID-19, because nobody is stopping. The work continues. The work continues, right? So look, I'm going to go into that in a little more detail later, and we have a visual for you with all of that. And I know some of the family from way back always look forward to seeing how the book deliveries go. So don't you go anywhere, all right? We're going to get this train moving and make sure you hold tight to find out where we delivered these books and how it went down, all right? Here we go. Greetings, virtual villagers. My name is Shania, and do you know what time it is? It's affirmation time. Time to remind ourselves how great we are. So everybody, repeat after me. I am smart. I, am smart. I have purpose. I am confident. I am, confident. I am valuable. I am valuable. My voice is worthy of being heard. I am an asset to my family, school, and community. I respect myself and I respect others. I am beautifully made inside and out. I love my beautiful hair and I love my beautiful brown skin. I am more than enough. Great job, virtual villagers. Can I get a virtual high five? Great job. And always remember how fantastic you are.
Greetings, virtual villagers. I'm Akai, and today's quote is by Star Armstrong. Reading is the gift of preparation and the expiration in palms of a child's hand. This episode of the Virtual Village Show has been brought to you by Truist. Good morning, students. Professor Ramona and I are going to be working on fractions today. Oh, cuenta el país. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him. Uh, excuse me. Ay, de nuevo. Teachers are doing whatever it takes to connect with their students. 202. And Cox is too. By connecting over 140,000 eligible students in need with low-cost internet. Who wants to see it again? <laughs> with the Connect to Compete program from Cox. Buying or selling a home doesn't have to be difficult. At the James Allen Group, we work tirelessly to get families into homes and to get our listings sold quickly at the best price. James Allen, our principal broker, has over 30 years of experience as a realtor. As a U.S. Navy veteran, his knowledge of Hampton Roads and his community is a vital tool in meeting the home buying needs of military families. If you're ready to buy or sell your home, contact the James Allen Group at 757-449-8322. Sign up today for our free home buyer or seller seminar at jamesallengroup.com. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Clever Communities in Action and our community partners have taken action to motivate and inspire children and families online. From reading culturally affirming literature, teaching foundational literacy lessons, and creating jobs for youth, our virtual village continues to grow. To be part of our virtual village, donate or learn how we are keeping literacy alive, visit clevercommunities.org. All right, family, so I am back. And are you guys feeling excited? Like every time, every time I hear that affirmation without fail, I don't care what type of mood I'm in, if I'm relaxed, if I'm tired, Shania always gets me pumped and amped and ready to go. I hope you guys are learning that affirmation and using that as a tool to motivate the little ones in your life so they understand that they are strong, that they are powerful, that their voices are worthy to be heard, that they are an asset, that they are more than enough, right? Because Shania brings us all the lightning and the thunder and the sunshine and everything good with the way that she delivers that. And we are so proud of our Virtual Village youth and the work that they put in for the Virtual Village in school and for their communities. Yes, yes, yes. So this train is moving, moving, moving. So I said I wanted to talk to you guys about the book delivery today. So listen, we are nine years into our book drive, all right? We are nine years in. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years that we have been donating culturally affirming books to Title I elementary schools around Hampton Roads and in Flint, Michigan. So that means that a lot of children have been getting a lot of books where they can see themselves positively reflected. And we did not do it earlier this year because the school shut down, right? But look, 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 we put up a post today and it said things that COVID can't stop. And that is us. COVID can't stop clever communities in action, right? And we see that COVID can't stop all the dedicated educators and staff who are showing up for our children in the best, most tremendous ways. So who who was the school that received these books this year? Where did they go? It was the mighty Monroe Elementary School in Norfolk, Virginia. And boy, did we have a wonderful time. So first of all, let's talk about um, Dr. James and all of her staff, all the teachers who were there, all of the staff who were there showing up for their children to make sure that they got their resource materials today. And that's when we did the book donation. So it was a remix. It wasn't like how we normally do it, but it still went off so well. And the thing is, nothing's gonna stop us. Those of us who are ready and willing to do the work, nothing's going to stop us. So it went off perfectly. And the children were able to come up, look through the books, um, the table with the books. And some of you guys are accustomed to seeing this over the years. They were excited and the teachers were excited. Everybody was excited. I was excited that we were able to add some new books to our um, selection this year. I wish I had them in front of me. <laughs> I wish I had some of those titles in front of me, but look, we're going to cut to a clip from today so you guys can see it for yourselves. 
Hello everyone, my name is Dr. James and I'm the principal here at James Monroe Elementary School, the home of the school. Well, we're so excited because we are ending quarter one and we're moving into quarter two. And a part of moving into quarter two is making sure that our children have everything that they need to have a successful virtual learning experience. And so what we're doing is passing out instructional toolkits for our children. Um, some things that are included in our instructional toolkit is definitely pencils and notebooks um, and, and books. Books so that our children and our families will be able to build their home libraries. Um, and one thing that we are doing here at James Monroe is definitely partnering up with um, Ms. Armstrong. And um, a part of what she's doing is exposing our children to African American authors. So we will be able to expand their knowledge and their vocabulary and um, share with them information and people that look just like them. Hey. Greetings, how y'all doing? I am Star Armstrong, founder of Clever Communities in Action, and we are here at the Mighty Monroe Elementary School for our ninth annual youth book drive. And as you guys can see, COVID cannot stop us from getting things done. We are determined to get these books into the hands of our babies here, our scholars, and I'm excited to have Ms. Dr. James here, the principal of Mighty Monroe Elementary. So Dr. James, what do you think about the whole book delivery and everything that's been going on today? Well, uh, I think this was an excellent turnout, um, and I think it was a great introduction to our families, for our children, and to the organization and our school as far as our partnership. It's our goal at James Monroe to make sure that every child reads every single night, and the goal of the district is for every child to read at least 14.2 minutes each day. So this is definitely a great partnership, and we are so excited to continue working with your organization. That is invaluable. So we appreciate that you guys appreciate that as well. Like you said, wonderful partnership here. Yes. And you guys are doing great things um, during this COVID-19 crisis to make sure that the learning continues. Yes, yes, y'all. So it was a wonderful day and the weather was in agreement with us. It was a nice sunny day. I don't know where you guys are tuning in from, but we had had some cold weather to come through and it warmed up for us to do this for the children. And that was well over 100 books that we had set up there. And again, the enjoyment, the delight on the children's faces when they pulled up and were able to choose a book. Parents were excited and parents were excited to be able to read the books to their children, and it's just everything that we can ask for. The understanding that um, literacy is important, that it is um, the foundation of learning. We had some parents coming along telling their children, make sure that you pick out one of the more challenging books. Don't you get one of those easy books because we're going to keep up and up and up in the ante. So I thought that was great. And again, just the excitement from the children, the parents, and all of the staff there. It was great. So shout out to Mighty Monroe Elementary School. We will be calling on you to be on the Virtual Village show as readers. It was a wonderful day. In my Ice Cube voice, today was a good day, family. Yes, yes, yes. So, And a tremendous thank you to all of our individual donors, as well as our sponsors who made this possible. You guys make sure you look out because there are more schools coming. The year is not over yet. So we will be um, donating books to some more schools, all right? So be on the lookout for that. And now we are going to move into our literacy lesson time. You guys know, again, here with Clever Communities in Action, it is all about the importance of reading. Reading is the foundation of learning. Literacy is a tool for liberation. And we are here to get free, all right? We understand that and we are freeing our babies' minds, understanding when they can read and they can read well, then the possibilities are limitless. So tonight we have one of our lovely teachers who you all have grown to know and love, and we are always excited to have her and her wonderful energy. So let's bring on Miss Owens. Hi, Hi Ms. Owens. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Thank you. You're welcome. Always glad to see you and your smiling face helps, um, you know, up the mood about 10 more notches. So great to have you here. How's your day been going? 
it's been super, super busy, but this is a great way to bring it in to wind it down. Yes, yes, yes. So glad to hear that. And for the viewers, up oh, Shania is saying hi, Miss Owen. <laughs> Yes, yes. That is our precious Shania there. We love her. And um, for everybody who is not aware, Miss Owens is also um, an NPS teacher and where she teaches. We've done a book delivery there before and we had a great time. That was a couple of years ago and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Oh my gosh. We had, we had a wonderful time at that school. So we look forward to, um, you know, when things clear up, being to get back over there with you guys again. And um, there's just a lot of care and concern where you guys are as well. We see that family, um, coming through here all the time showing love with the virtual village so we appreciate that and the thing that we love about our um, virtual village teachers here i say this over and over again is that you guys are dedicated you guys you know care you guys understand the challenges that some of our students face you are there with them through that you are there with them for the highs the lows and all of that and so that's what we're all about teachers who care and teachers who understand who are um you know, strong in their field. So tonight you have a lesson that you're going to deliver for us, right? Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. Always. All right. Well, I am going to step away and let Miss Owens deliver this lesson. And then you guys who are new to the program, because I'm pretty sure we have some um, Monroe scholars and um, parents and family tuning in right now. Don't you guys go anywhere either because Miss Owens also does a story time. So I'm going to step away and let her do the lesson. All right. All right. You got it. <laughs> all right. Good evening, guys. I'm so excited to be here on this Wednesday. So I'm going to just go ahead and get started. We have three things that we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about the short I sound. We will also be talking about proper nouns. And as we read our story, we will be talking about a comprehension strategy called predicting. All right, so first I'm going to say a word and we're going to say each sound and listen for the short I sound. I sounds, I says, it. Let's try it. It. So the first word I have is trip. I have the word trip. Tr -i -p. Tr -i -p. Trip. All right, good job. The second word I have is dip. Dip. D -i -p. D -i -p. Dip. Very good. The third word I have is kick. Kick. Like the boy likes to kick the ball. K -i -k. K -i -k. Kick. Good job. The next word I have is sip. Sip. I like to sip some water. Sip. Sip. Ip, sip. And the last word I have is clip. Clip. K clip. K clip. 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 I clip my nails. All right. Good job, virtual villagers. All right. So the next thing that we're going to talk about are proper nouns. Now, what in the world is a proper noun? Well, it's important to know proper nouns because in our writing, whenever we write a proper noun, it should have a capital letter at the beginning of the word, regardless of where it appears in the sentence. So it doesn't matter where it appears in the sentence. If it's a proper noun, it has to have a capital letter at the beginning of the word. Well, what is a proper noun, you probably ask. A proper noun is a specific name for a particular person, place, or thing. So for example, a person's name, like my name, you see I have a capital L and a capital O. 
or a city, like if you were looking at Norfolk, the N would be capital. The names of stores would have a capital letter. So let's look at some sentences. Our first sentence is, I live in Chesapeake, Virginia. So you see the I, the I is capitalized because whenever we talk about ourselves, I, we have to capitalize that letter. You also see the C in Chesapeake is capitalized because that is a city, that is a proper noun. And then you see the V in Virginia is capitalized because that is our state. That is a state. It has to be capitalized. Very good. Here's another sentence. We went to Disney World for vacation. We went to Disney World for vacation. So the beginning of our sentence, of course, we have to have a capital letter. But Disney World is a proper noun, proper noun because it is a name of a place. So you have to have the D capitalized and the W capitalized in Disney World. Awesome. All right. So let's see if we can make some corrections in some of these sentences. So the First sentence I have is, I'm going to Food Lion after school. Hmm, there's something wrong with this sentence. Can we see what's wrong with this sentence? Yes, I cannot fool you. We have to capitalize the F in food and the L in lion because they are proper nouns. Food Lion is a name of a specific store. So it has to have capital letters. Good job. Let's try another sentence. My sister Monica is having a birthday party. Hmm, what do we need to fix in this sentence? Yes, my sister's name is a proper noun. It is a person's name. So we need to put a capital M in Monica. Very good. Now let's look at one more. School will be out in June. Hmm, there is a mistake in that sentence. Where is it? Hmm, let's see. Ah, right here, June. That is a month. That is a specific name of a month. So it is a proper noun and it needs to be capitalized. So the J in June needs to be capitalized. Great job, virtual villagers. You guys are awesome. So for our reading focus today, we're going to read a story and we are going to focus on looking at the pictures and making predictions about what's going to happen in the story. So our story is called Boundless Grace. And it's actually a sequel to another book called Amazing Grace. So if you've ever read Amazing Grace, this is a sequel. And it's by Mary Hoffman and Caroline Finch. Hmm, I wonder what this story could be about. Looking at the title, see a little girl on it. I'm going to predict this is Grace right here. That was an excellent lesson that you did. <laughs> yeah, and I love how for any of our um, villagers who are local and tuned in, and they were able to recognize some things that are familiar with them within that text. That was great. Mm -hmm. It's always a wonderful job and light up the classroom. So that was great. We definitely, definitely enjoyed that. And um, I see you gave us a preview 
of what this story is going to be about. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, that is super, super exciting because we love Grace. <laughs> she happens to be a favorite when we go around and do readings at schools. Yes. And everybody loves Grace. Everybody loves Grace. And you have boundless. I always do amazing. I know um, that's what people do. Yeah, yeah. I found out about boundless Grace a little late. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I see something. Ding, ding, ding. Somebody is representing. I didn't see that at first. Can you back up a little bit so we can see the representation? Hold on, you guys. Tune in. We got a show. Oh, oh, oh my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody is representing the village this evening. I wish I, I had a prayer. <laughs> we absolutely love that. That is virtual village love right there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it is, let's see, we are going to go ahead, I'm going to step away and um, let you give us this boundless grace. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, virtual villagers, boundless grace is the story that we're going to be reading. And we looked at the title and my prediction was that this story was about a little girl named grace now what does it mean when they say she is boundless hmm we'll have to read to find out all right grace lived with her ma and her nana and a cat called papa Next to her family, what Grace liked best was stories. Some she knew and some she made up. She was particularly interested in one about fathers because she didn't have one. You do too have a father, her ma said when she caught Grace talking that way. I must have told you a hundred times about how we split up and your papa went back to Africa. He has another family now but he's still your father, even though he doesn't live with us anymore. I'm looking at Grace's expression right there. Like, yeah, okay, mom. Well, that wasn't Grace's idea of a father. She wanted one like Beauties, who brought her roses from the beast garden in spite of the dangers. Not one she had seen since she was very little and only knew from letters and photographs. I see the picture right there. That must be her father. And in her school reading books, Grace saw that all the families had a mother and a father, a boy and a girl, and a dog and a cat. Our family's not right, she told Nana. We need a father and a brother and a dog. Well, said Nana, I'm not sure how Papa would feel about a dog. And what about me? Are there any Nanas in your school books? Grace shook her head. Do I have to go then? Asked Nana. Of course not, Grace said, hugging her. Nana hugged her back. A family with you and it is a real family, she said. Families are what you make them. Then one day when Grace got home from school, she saw a letter on the table with a crocodile stamp on it. Grace knew it must be from Papa, but it wasn't Christmas or her birthday. Guess what, Ma said. Your Papa sent the money for two tickets to visit him in Africa for your spring vacation. Nana says she'll go with you if you want. What do you say? Grace was speechless. She had made up so many fathers for herself. She had forgotten what the real one was like. Look at her facial expression. She's like, what? Is she gonna go? Is she gonna wanna go? I think she's gonna wanna go. Grace and Nana left for Africa on a very cold gray day. 
They arrived in the Gambia in golden sunset like the hottest summer back home. It had been a long, long trip. Grace barely noticed the strange sights and sounds that greeted her. She was thinking of Papa. I wonder if Papa will still love me, thought Grace. He has other children now. And in stories, it's always the youngest that is the favorite. She held on tightly to Nana. Do you think Papa's going to still love her? Hmm. Outside the airport was a man who looked a little like Papa's photo. He swung Grace up in his arms and held her close. Grace buried her nose in his shirt and thought, I do remember. In the car, she started to notice how different everything seemed. There were sheep wandering along the roadside and people selling watermelons under the trees. She's definitely happy and he's happy to see her. And when they reached her father's compound, there was the biggest difference of all. A pretty young woman with a little girl and a baby boy came to meet them. Grace said hello, but couldn't manage another word all evening. Everyone thought she was just tired, except Nana. I wonder what's wrong, Grace. Hmm. What's the matter, honey? She asked when they went to bed. You've got a father and a brother now, and they even have a dog. But Grace thought, they make a storybook family without me. I'm one girl too many. Besides, it's the wrong ma. So there's her father, her Nana. There she is. There's her father's wife and her new brother and her sister. The next day, Grace started to get to know Nene and Thackeray. The children thought it was wonderful to have a big sister all the way from America. And Grace couldn't help liking them too. But she had a, to feel cross with someone. So she's mad. Grace knew lots of stories about wicked stepmothers, Cinderella, Snow White, Hansel and Gretel. So she decided to be cross with Jack too. I won't clean the house for her, thought Grace. I won't eat anything she cooks and I won't let her take me into the forest. She reads too many books. Jatu made a big dish of savory venison for lunch, but Grace wouldn't eat any. I'm not hungry, she said. She's probably still getting over the long flight, said Jatu. Mm, we don't think so. We think she's just being stubborn. My pages don't turn. When Papa came home from work, he found Grace in the backyard. He sat beside her under the big old jackfruit tree. This is where my grandma used to tell me stories when I was a little boy, he said. Nana tells me stories too, said Grace. Did she ever tell you the one about how your ma and I came to split up? Asked Papa. I know that one, said Grace. But I don't want to hear it right now. And she covered up her ears. Papa hugged her. Would you like the one about the Papa who loved this little girl so much he saved up all his money to bring her to visit him? Yes, I like that one, said Grace. Okay. But if I tell you that story, will you promise to try to be nice to Jatu? You're both very important to me, said Papa. Grace thought about it. I'll try, she said. She's definitely very stubborn. The next day, they went to the market. It was much more exciting than shopping at home. Even the money had crocodiles on it. Lots of the women carried their shopping on their head. Look at that. She's carrying something on her head. She's carrying something on her head. Amazing. Then they went to a stall that was like stepping inside a rainbow. 
there was cloth with crocodiles and elephants on it and cloth with patterns made from pebbles and shells and so many colors. We can choose cloth from Grace's first, we can choose cloth for Grace's first African dress, said Papa. Grace and Nana spent a long time choosing. No one was in a hurry. I see her, she is smiling. She is so happy right now. <laughs> the days of Grace visit, Grace's visit flew by. She played in the ocean with her brother and sister, and she told them a bedtime story every night. She told all the stories she knew. Beauty and the Beast, Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin. It was amazing how many stories were about fathers who gave their daughters away. But she didn't tell them any about wicked stepmothers. Sometimes Ma called from home and her voice made Grace feel homesick. I feel like gum, stretched out all thin in a bubble, she told Nana. As if there isn't enough of me to go around. I can't manage two families. What if I burst? Seems to me there is enough of you, Grace, said Nana. Plenty to go around. And remember, families are what you make them. Mm -hmm. On their last morning, Papa took Grace to see some real crocodiles. This is a special holy place, he said. The crocodiles are so tame, you can stroke them. Not like the one in Peter Pan, said Grace. No. These are so special, you can make a wish on them, said Papa. Grace closed her eyes and made a wish, but she wouldn't say what it was. Wow, the touching the crocodile. Scary. I wonder what her wish is. Later on in the compound, Grace asked Nana, why aren't there any stories about families like mine that don't live together? Well, at least you stop thinking about thinking it's your family that's wrong, said Nana. Now, until we get back home and find some books about families like yours, you'll just have to make up a new story of your own. I'll do that, said Grace. And when we're home again, I'll write it down and send it to Jatu to read to Nana, Nene and Bakari. The whole family came to see them off at the airport. Grace was so sorry to say goodbye to her new brother and sister and even to her stepmother, but leaving Papa was the hardest of all. Waiting for their plane, Nana asked Grace if she had thought any more about her story. Yes, but I can't think of the right ending, said Grace, because the story's still going on. How about they lived happily ever after, asked Nana. That's a good one, said Grace. Or they lived happily ever after, though not all in the same place. Stories are what you make them, said Nana. Just like families, said Grace. And that's the end. Boundless. A boundless Grace. Hope you liked it. That was wonderful. Um, hmm. So yeah, I've seen the title of Boundless Grace. I have not heard the story before. It's different from Amazing Grace. We learn more about the character than what mm -hmm. we heard before. The first one introduces us into her um, imagination and her strength and all of that is such a little girl. Now we get an insight into her family. That was a unique take on a blended family, definitely. And yes. I think it's representation for children who have that as an experience that have never had a story written about that. I've heard about blended families, but not about where you're, you know, a part of your family is in another country. So that was really great. And I enjoyed her journey. I was able to identify with some of the emotions she experienced as being very real from a child's perspective. And also even adults do that sometimes. Like they're frustrated 
I need to take it out on somebody. Yes. <laughs> it may not be the person who deserves it, but um, and then of course Nana's there and her dad to talk her through those things and um mm -hmm. the power of understanding, you know, through talking to her Nana that uh there's nothing wrong with your family, there's nothing wrong with your situation just because you haven't seen it um put out there before. So I think that was a great story and it transcends in a lot of different even if we don't have Grace's exact experience, like I said, some of her emotions and things, the ways that she felt definitely are applicable to our lives. So that was a great selection. I really enjoyed that. Was there anything that you wanted to share with us about Bathless Grace? Well, yeah. I know when I first read this story, um, it this why it's always been one of my favorites because it hit home for me personally as a military child. And, you know, my father, what had another family as well, you know? So I was just like, man, like I felt all that because I went to visit my father and his other family when I was around her age and I mm. was thinking the same thing and I would be like, mm, I don't know about this. And I'm just like, wow. So this, this was like a personal thing for me when I read this book. So I l shared it with my students throughout the, the last five, six years I've been reading this. That's amazing. And see, that speaks so much to our mission here with the representation. And so when you are able to find something that speaks to it has someone who looks like you, who is going through something that is relevant to your own lived experience, that is so powerful to find that in a book. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 You really um, hit that um, right on home for us this evening about the whole representation piece. The kids love it too because it's a it's a huge talking. It like it brings a lot of talking out of them because a lot of them say I can relate to that and they share their own personal stories and it's it it, it brings us even closer as a as a classroom family when we read um, books like this. So excellent. That's what we want. That's what we love. So glad to hear that your students are enjoying that. And I heard that Grace was somewhere where there was a jackfruit tree. And I was like, I would love to have a jackfruit tree in my backyard. And then they were petting um, with a, their crocodiles. I was like, okay, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> but it was very, very interesting. I enjoyed that story. So thank you so much for bringing that to us. Thank you for bringing us that lesson this evening and bringing all of these things to life in ways that only you can, all right? We appreciate right. you, Miss Owens, and we look forward to having you back next week. Absolutely, you know it. All right, will you enjoy the rest of your evening? Yes, yes, well, it is always our pleasure to have Miss Owens on here and all of our wonderful Virtual Village teachers. We hope you guys have enjoyed the, the lesson that she provided as well as the story time. And we have some wonderful things in store, so don't you go anywhere. We'll have a word from our sponsors and then y'all sit tight. Smart kids make our world better. At Heavenly Hearts, we believe that the right foundation is key to our future leader success. With our four key learning principles, which are inclusive learning environment, early exposure to financial literacy, community engagement, science and technology with engineering, art and math labs will enrich each one of our future leaders as well as the community they are part of. In these unprecedented times, the $59 billion child care industry has been dramatically impacted by the pandemic. Heavenly Hearts has currently implemented several advanced health and safety precautions to protect our children and staff at our current licensed facility in Chesapeake, Virginia. Our new location will continue to use advanced technology to protect our children from this and future threats to their health and safety. As our mission is to educate, empower, and equip our students with the necessary foundation to be holistically successful throughout life, we invite you to get involved. As an investor or community partner, you can help in a variety of ways. Contact Serena May at 757-254-8156. This episode of the Virtual Village Show has been brought to you by Truist. Greetings, Virtual Villagers. I am Jamir. 
I'm going to bring you today's moment in history. Katherine Johnson excelled in mathematics from a young age. After skipping several grades throughout elementary school, Johnson attended West Virginia State University and was handpicked as one of three black students and the only black woman to attend WVU's graduate program. In 1952, she began working for the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, also known as NACA, which slowly transitioned into the program we know today as NASA. There, she worked on an investigation of a plane crash and analyzed data from flight tests. When the Soviet Union launched the satellite Sputnik in 1957, Johnson transitioned into mathematics for space travel and became a part of the Space Task Force, which was the first official move into space exploration. Johnson co-authored a report laying out equations needed for orbital spaceflight and became the first woman credited as a research author for the team. Johnson's orbital calculations were groundbreaking and she conducted by hand one of the final tests before successfully sending John Glenn into space. Following that success, Johnson's calculations were used to send a man to the moon, marking a historic moment in U.S. spaceflight. In 2015, President Barack Obama awarded Johnson the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Greetings virtual villagers, I'm Asia and I'm delighted to bring you today's book recommendation. Jamir told you about the outstanding Miss Katherine Johnson. If you are interested in learning about more about Miss Johnson, be sure to check out Counting the Stars, the story of Katherine Johnson, NASA mathematician by Lisa Klein Ransom and Raul Colleen. You can purchase this book at your local black owned bookstore or visit smile.amazon.com and add Clever Communities in Action as your charity, and Amazon will donate a percentage of the price of your purchases at no cost to you. All right, family, Virtual Village family, it's been a wonderful evening all the way from Shania with the affirmation, our wonderful intro. Um, you guys getting to see the work that was done today at the Mighty Monroe Elementary our um, foundational literacy lesson and story time with Boundless Grace, the moments in history. Jamir is always bringing us the knowledge of someone who has affected our community, our country and our world in the most outstanding ways. And then Asia rounds it off with that book recommendation. And now I am just here to wrap it all up with you guys. Again, it has been great. A wonderful, wonderful day. I cannot stress enough all of the appreciation we have for those who have supported our efforts throughout the years and those who have supported our efforts since the virtual village has begun. You all have a wonderful evening. Make sure you all stay safe out there. Make sure that you are loving on each other, that you are loving on our children. We had that discussion last night about how some of our youth are experiencing depression as a result of not being able to go to school and be around their teachers, be around their peers and convene in a way in which they are used to. So it is our job as villagers to make sure that we practice those guerrilla love tactics and that we are loving on them in all the ways that we can. So that includes phone calls, that includes video calls, that includes text messages, all the ways that we can let them know that we love them and that they matter. We never can show them too much love and make sure villagers that you are loving yourself and each other. All right. So on that note, I'm going to get out of here and you all have a great evening. Peace.
culturally relevant. Sit back and listen to the wisdom while we represent. So reliable, culturally relevant. Read us to lead us, they hold it down where they have a sit. Who reliable, culturally relevant. Sit back and listen to the wisdom while you represent. So reliable, culturally relevant. Read us to lead us, they hold it down, yeah, they have a sit. Look at my making me do me in action. Well, oh my, let's down to that. Look, daddy, there's a book for me too. Well, oh my, let's down to that. Creative, urban, and culture for me too. Look, Randy, let's down to that.